All right, let's make another video, this time of the calculator active questions from practice S2. And I will remind you that these are not perfectly like the AP exam. Um, they're a little bit longer in, or slash more difficult in the they overemphasize certain topics. But each one by itself is worthy review. Okay, so for 31, we're given something about velocity. And the trick here that you have to pay attention to is they're telling you how velocity is related to position, not its time formula. So they're basically telling you the rate at which position changes is 12 times square root of s. So this is a differential equation. We'll use separation of variables. So if I separate the variables, I basically have 1 over root s ds equals 12 dt and I can integrate each side. This is the negative one-half power on the left, so that goes to 2s to the one-half. Here we have 12t plus c. So we have root s equals 6t plus c, and s is 6t plus c squared. So we're told that when time is zero, s equals one. So s of 0 would be 6 times 0 plus c squared, which is 1. So c is 1. So s is 6t plus 1 squared. So when the time is equal to 1, if I plug that in, I get 7 squared, which is 49. Okay, problem number 32. We want to know what is the value of k that makes those two areas the same. Uh, if you set this equal to 0, you'll get that this is at negative 1 and that is at 5, right? That just factors. So the area of A, right, we can do that on the calculator, right? You can do that by hand if you want to, um, but you can do that with an integral. Now, if you just integrate that function from negative 1 to 5, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, integrate x squared, obviously you can't see my calculator, minus 4x minus 5 dx. It comes out to negative 36 because this is below the x-axis. So the pure integral will give us a negative, but the area here is 36, right? The net signed area was negative 36. So what we want is that the integral from 5 to k of this function is equal to 36. And you should be able to just do numerical solve with that. So I am going to do numerical solve on my calculator. under algebra, number six, numerical solve. And I'm just going to put this in. I'm going to do the calculus step in my numerical solve. Integral from five to k of this function x squared minus four x minus five dx is equal, oops, dx is equal to 36, and I'm going to solve that for k. The variable you're solving for is k, and oh, I got negative 1, so I have to, no, I see what happened. So I, I need to put some, when I find the answer that is bigger than 5. and I get eight. Uh, you could certainly do this by hand because you know these antiderivatives, but using the calculator is faster. It's hard for me to demonstrate that one, unfortunately. Okay, number 36. Bacteria in a culture increase at a rate proportional to the number present. If it's proportional, it grows like an exponential function. So the initial population of 200, right? So we're starting with 200 and it's some kind of exponential like that. It triples after 10 hours. So if I plug in 10, I get three times as much, which is 600. Let me make this.
that's oh that's good. so e to the 10k is 3 10k is the natural log of 3 so k is the natural log of 3 over 10 I can estimate that on my calculator So that is approximately 0.1099. Ah, I don't know what just happened there. So we want to know how many there are after one day. That's 24 hours. So basically, we're just going to do 200 times e to the this value of k times 24. and I get something in the neighborhood of 2,800, that is C. Right here, these answers are different enough apart that we don't have to be too worried about our rounding issues. Okay, 34 is about substitution in a somewhat abstract way. So they are giving us this integral and telling us how they, we should do the substitution. So x is 2t minus 1. So dx over dt is 2. dx equals 2 dt. dt equals 1 half dx. If we change everything, including the limits of integration, um, x equals 3 turns into... Wait, sorry. We're starting with t. t equals 3 gives us x equals 5 t equals 5 gives us x equals 9. So I'm going to substitute everything here. I have the integral as x goes from 5 to 9 of t times the square root of x. x is, this is u substitution without the letter u, right? But the same pattern. And then dt is um, 1 half dx. Now we still have this t that we need to substitute. So if things don't cancel, do more substitution. x plus one is the same as two t. So t is one half x plus one. So we have here five ninths, uh, integral from five to nine of one half quantity x plus one times the square root of x times one half dx. And they're writing it in this form with a constant in front. So if we move the, those in front, we get a constant of 1 fourth. Right, so what's the constant in front? And what are the limits of integration? We have 1 fourth, 5, and 9. And so the answer would be B for number 34. All right. Curve defined this way, we need to think implicit differentiation. Vertical tangent would mean that the slope is undefined. So we'll jump right in. X is a variable, but Y is a function. So product rule here, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second minus 2Y dy dx equals 0. So we have 3X squared plus Y plus dy times x minus 2y equals 0. So if I move things around, I will get dy over dx is negative 3x squared plus y over x minus 2y. This would be undefined when x minus 2y equals 0. Oops, yikes, what happened? This would be undefined when x minus 2y is equal to 0, which means x equals 2y, which means y equals 1 half x. So which x is that? Well, what we can now do is we can plug in that known relationship. We know this happens when y is equal to 1 half x. So I have x cubed plus x times 1 half x minus x over 2 squared equals 10. And I can do numerical solve for that on my calculator. So 
menu, algebra, numerical solve. I will just put in this equation, x to the third my, or plus one half x squared, if I simplify that a little bit, minus, it's one quarter x squared for the next one. And I want that to be equal to 10. Solve it for x. And I get 2.074. Is that listed? That is C. So 35 is C. <clears throat> okay, 36 and 37. They have this graph. They tell us this. On instinct, I just want to use the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus to take its derivative. g prime of x would be f of 3x minus 1 by the chain rule times 3. So g prime of 1 would be f of, I would plug that in, 2 times 3. From this graph, f of 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 36 is d. Okay. Now, G has a local maximum. G will have a local maximum when G prime switches from positive to negative. This whole expression, oops, this whole expression switches signs when 3x minus 1 equals 0. The idea is that f is positive for a while. You're sorry, not, not zero. Give me a second. Equals three. Multiplying by three will not affect whether our derivative is positive or negative. f is positive for a while, then negative for a while. So our derivative is positive for a while, then negative for, for a while. It switches when the thing inside the parentheses gets to three. So if we solve this, we have x equals 4 thirds. When x equals 4 thirds, we are actually taking f of 3, which is that place where it's 0. You could think that if we're solving for a critical point, if you want to think of it that way, if we set this equal to 0, it means that this is equal to 0, which means that this is equal to 3. So it happens at 4 thirds, which is B for number 37. Okay, number 38, given a table with various things. I want to find this limit. First instinct is just plug in. If I plug in x equals 2, I would have 6 plus 3 times negative 2 over 1 half times 4 minus 2 times e to the 0. That is 0 over 0. All right, well, it's eligible for L'Hopital's rule because we have nice functions here. So I'll try it again. I'll take the derivative of the top, which would be f prime of x plus 3g prime of x. Derivative of the bottom would be x minus 2 e to the x minus 2, technically times 1 because that's the derivative of the inner function. Let's try plugging in again. I would have f prime of 2, which is negative 1, plus 3 times g prime of 2, which is 1 third. Here I would have 2 minus 2 again, still 0 over 0, but it's still eligible for L'Hopital's rule. Let's do it one more time. So if I take derivatives one more time, f double prime of x plus 3 times g double prime of x over 1 minus the same thing, it's its own derivative, now when I plug in 2, I would have f double prime of 2, which is negative 2, plus 3 times g double prime of 2, which is negative 4 thirds, over 1 minus 2. So we have negative 2 minus 4 over negative 1. It looks like we're getting 6, so 38 is c. Okay, 39 Using the left rectangular method and four subintervals of equal width, we want to estimate the definite integral of the absolute value. 
So when we're plugging in the heights, we must make them positive. We're doing left. So our first interval goes from zero to two. It is two units wide, and the height at the left end is three. Our second interval goes from two to four. It is two units wide. The height at the left interval is zero. Our third interval goes from four to six. It is two units wide. The height at the left interval is negative four, but we want absolute value. We count all the heights as positive, so we do two times four, not two times negative four. And our last one goes from six to eight. The width is two. The absolute value of the height is one. So it looks like we have six plus zero plus eight plus two, 16, which is D. If you counted the negatives, I'm pretty sure the wrong answer is waiting for you. Or if you did it po positives and negatives and then took the absolute value at the end, that one's waiting for you. Right? The function is the absolute value, so every time you're asked for a height, get the absolute value. All right, number 40. Okay, so we are taking the second derivative of f of x squared. So I have y equals f of x squared. I feel like those parentheses should have been there, but that's what this means. So if I take a first derivative, I have 2 times f of x times by the chain rule f prime of x. To take another derivative, it's product rule. I will factor out that 2. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And we want to know the value when we plug in 3. So at x equals 3, we have 2 times f prime of 3, which is 5, times itself. f of 3 is 2. f double prime is negative 2. So this appears to be 2 times 25 minus 4. 2 times 21 is 42, which is listed. 40 is D. Okay, 41. The velocity of a particle in motion along a line is given by this velocity function. Find the acceleration when the object is at rest. So rest would be when velocity is 0. So the natural log of 2 minus t squared equals 0. That means 2 minus t squared is equal to 1. That means t squared is equal to 1. We only care about positive time, so that's 1. So that's the time when it's at rest. What is its acceleration? So acceleration is the derivative of velocity. You can do this on your calculator, actually. But its derivative would be 1 over 2 minus t squared, then by chain rule times the derivative of the inside. If I plug in 1, I would get a of 1 is 1 over 2 minus 1 times negative 2. That works out to negative 2, which is a. All right, 42. We have this function. We're told that x is positive and increasing. Find the value of x for which the rate of increase of f is 10 times the rate of increase of x. So we're imagining that x is increasing over time. So here's what's going on. We're trying to think about df dt. df dt is df dx times dx dt. This is a version of chain rule. And we want to figure out what is the value of x that makes it such that this rate of change of f is 10 times the rate of change of x. Well, we don't need to know what this is. It just cancels away from each side. And we're basically just trying to figure out when is the derivative of f with respect to x equal to 10. If that is equal to 10, then all the things with time will be 10 times as big. So f prime of x is, oops, x squared plus 1. We want that to be equal to 10. If you solve that, you get x equals 3. So 42 is C. Okay, the rate of change of the surface area S of a balloon is inversely proportional to the square of the surface area. 
which describes this relationship. So this is just conceptual. The rate of change of the surface area, so just the left-hand side there would be ds dt, the derivative. Okay. Inversely proportional means that it is some constant times the reciprocal of something. Some constant times the reciprocal of what? Some constant times the reciprocal of the square of the surface area, which is S squared. Right. Proportional means one is a multiple of the other. Inversely proportional means one is a multiple of the reciprocal of the other. So this is equivalent to C. 43 is C. Okay, two objects in motion from time zero to three have these position functions. How many times during the three seconds do they have the same velocity? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna figure out their velocity functions. This one is negative sine t squared plus one times two t. This one, all right, I guess we'll do quotient rule. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. I'm going to graph both of these from 0 to 3. There's probably a more elegant way of doing this. Again, these problems are more involved on average than real AP problems. But let's just think about the principle here. So I'm just going to start a new document so that I have a fresh graph here. So I will graph one of these functions. Feel free to call it x so you can graph it more easily. So I have negative sine of x squared plus 1 times 2 times x. And I will graph another function, which is... e to the x times 2 times x. Minus e to the x times 2. All over quantity 2x squared. You can't see this, but I'm just carefully putting this in my calculator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my window so that I'm only looking at what happens during the three seconds. So I'm graphing both of those things, but I'm going to change my window settings so that x, which is playing the role of time, starts at 0 and ends at 3. My y's probably don't matter as long as I can see everything. So when I do that, I notice these graphs cross each other three times. So the way I did this is I figured out what is the velocity function, what is the velocity function, and to know how many times I have the same velocity, I graphed those two velocity functions, and there seem to be three times that they are the same. Um, huh, this is different from the listed answer in the book. So let me just quickly check to see if I did something silly or if they did something silly. Bear with me, please. Oh, I mistyped the first one. I forgot the times two times x. Okay, so that changes my graph, and now that I can see they cross four times. I am checking my answers against the book as I go. So that was just me. I forgot to type that in. Right, always really double or triple check as you're typing these things in. But this problem, there's a little too much going on here for a, even on average three minute uh, problem with your calculator. 
I don't think you would have to do something quite so intense uh, in, within a limited time. Although the concept is you should understand, right? I can figure out the velocity, I can figure out the other velocity, and a graph will help me know how many times they are the same. All right, and then finally, okay. So here is the thing. You can ignore all the setup here. We want to know the average amount, and this is telling us the amount. So it's really just, do you know your average value formula? We take the definite integral from 100 to 200 of this function. And then we divide that by how wide an interval it is. That's 100. So I will do this on my calculator. Definite integral from 100 to 200 of this function, 50 times e to the power negative 0.015t. I do that definite integral and divide it by 100, and I get approximately 5.8, which is b. All right, there we go.